Let's listen to TJ and Brad for this last lap and kind of the information Brad was getting to make the decisions on, on hanging with the bottom lane. The three wide behind you there, all good, man. You got help coming here. You're on, you're on, he is not. Outside, third back to tight. Two by two here, man, no third lane. Just two by two, two by two, the five's on, five's on, five's on, he's on. He's on, he's on, he's on, he's on. Be ready for the Kawafa entry. He's on, 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 on. On, 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 you're clear. You're clear, the bigger helps on the outside. They're tight on the outside. Tight on the 47 on the high side. Tight on the 47 on the high side. Here they come, back outside you. Here's your help. Here comes your help here. Outside only, the 47. Even, go pull them, go pull them, go pull them, go pull them. Two outside, two outside, green checker, checker flag right there, checker flag right there. So after listening to TJ Majors kind of talk through what happened on that last lap and all the information he was given Brad, let's take a look at the SMT data that we have here that, that walks through the whole lap and this data trace has some information for what Brad was doing inside the car. Yeah, this is stuff that we're lucky enough to see Luke throughout the event and it's, it's basically giving all the inputs the driver is doing while he's in the car. Up here we have throttle, the blue being Ricky Stenhouse, the orange being Brad Keselowski. Ricky never lifts. He is wide open. 100%. Here we have brake pressure, and then we have steering angle down here. And there's some things that are really telling that TJ was walking through to kind of go through the head of, of Brad Keselowski when he's hearing it. And, and we heard a lot of he's on you, he's coming to get you. And what that means is the five is almost ready to touch his bumper. And what Brad wants is you see right here, in the middle of one and two, he's lifting. People think you're out front. Why aren't you going wide open? Brad's lifting to try to get Kyle Larson to attach to his bumper to run down the straightaway. Most guys are able to run completely wide open all the way around the racetrack. So these decisions to lift and use brake is not to fight a handling condition as much as it is to actually keep the energy in the lanes that, that the drivers are trying to do to plan for the snare that you're going to get when you come off the corner. Yeah, and we talked about it. We, we heard it from TJ. This spot right here in the race, Brad Keselowski's out in front. He's clear. TJ's voice makes it sound like he's thinking, Brad, you might want to move up. That outside lane's a little more connected. They've got a little more energy. TJ's giving that information, and Brad decides to kind of stay committed to the bottom lane so they can get a good push down the front stretch. Brad has just gone through the first race this year and, and, and saw kind of how the bottom lane stayed committed. I think that that's feeding into his information. He's probably looking at the cars that he's got stacked up behind him and the cars on the outside and, and trying to decide, hey, if he makes that move for the top, are those guys going to work with him? Or are they just going to team up against him and try to go around him? So when Brad makes that decision to not move to the top in the middle of three and four, that's when he's applying more brake and, and coming off the throttle again to really try to stack up the line and get tight with the five and, and hopefully have the cars behind the five stay tight with him so that when they come off the turn four towards the dog leg, they've got a really strong line to push. When you're getting pushed down the straightaway in a, in a speedway race, it's kind of out of control for the guy getting pushed. He's, he's all over the place, and you really see that in Ricky Stenhouse. The guy that had the most energy in his lane, and they were the tightest and connected to him the most, Ricky's the blue, and this is the steering trace. And the, the higher the line goes, the more left he puts. The lower it goes, the more right input he puts with the steering wheel. He's doing a lot of seesawing back and forth with the steering wheel, which probably means the 24 is attached to his bumper. He's getting pushed harder than Brad Keselowski. Brad's line, the orange one, looks fairly normal. And the five is a little off of the six, and that's the difference in .006. Yeah, which... I mean, it is so incredibly close. And if you, if you can imagine, if you just could move the start-finish line 50 yards one way or the other, you could have a different result. So. You know, everybody's trying to do everything they can, and then by the time you get to the dog leg, you've somewhat committed to your plan, and you just have to stay with the line you're running and hope it works.